My name is Nick. I am an addict and alcoholic, and I just can't seem to stop with uh, just one. One's too many, thousands never enough. I will be reading from the CDA Chemically Dependent Anonymous book, um, Step 2, for those of you who are working the steps. Step 2, we came to believe that a power greater than ourselves could restore us to sanity. Powerlessness and unmanageability were not easy to admit, but we could not deny the evidence in our own lives. Chemical dependency, which we had tried again and again to control on our own, had brought us to the point of desperation. The pain in our lives was now great enough for us to admit defeat. From this point, we looked to CDA for help. <clears throat> what would it take to get and stay chemical free? To those of us accustomed to instant gratification and quick chemical cures, step two is dismaying to say the least. A power greater than ourselves restores to sanity? What's going on here? We want a way out of chemical dependency. We say not a religion or a cult to join. What does this step have to do with anything? What was it we admitted in step one? Powerlessness and unmanageability. What is it we are offered in step two? A power greater than ourselves. If our own power is not sufficient, then we can only conclude that a higher power is necessary. The alternative to, to denying this power is insanity and death. Insanity, we say? Yes, it could have reached that point. We could have used until we were utterly destroyed our minds <clears throat> as well as our bodies. At least we didn't have to go, to that, go that far. Step two, however, does not talk about being relieved from some possibility of insanity in the future. It states that anyone who, accept, who accepts step one must next accept the need to be restored to sanity. In other words, our chemical dependency has already resulted in some kind of insanity. Even those of us who have spent time in psychiatric hospitals or in some form of counseling would have trouble describing themselves as insane. How much stronger then is the denial of those who have not experienced this much? Are we really crazy? In step one we looked at examples of our powerlessness. We were dismayed to realize how many times we had told ourselves that we could control our use <clears throat> by trying to limit the amount, by trying to behave differently while under the influence Yet we found ourselves using more and hurting ourselves and others worse than ever. We believe it would be different this time, even though it had never been different before. We, we believed we could repeat the same actions and get different results in spite of more evidence to the contrary. Is this the work of a sound mind? We also looked at the unmanageability in our lives. We saw loss or impending loss of those things that give life stability and rationality. The ability to work and be responsible, the ability to love and have positive relationships of all sorts, and ability to respect ourselves. We knew that we had lost or were losing these things due, due to our actions under the influence. How sane were these actions? Did it make sense to go to work loaded or skip work altogether when we knew our bosses were ready to let us go? Did it make sense to keep pushing our loved ones to their limit? Did it make sense to attempt to fill the emptiness inside of us with that which was destroying us? Are these sound actions? Unsound in mind, unsound in action. What better definition of insanity? <clears throat> okay, okay, we cried. We're powerless over chemicals. Our lives are unmanageable. We have not been thinking, acting, or living sanely. Now the only way out is religion? We're sunk. Relax. CDA is not a religion, nor does it require any specific belief of its members. We state the obvious. If our own power is not enough, we need a greater power. The beauty of it is that each of us has chosen or our own concept of a higher power. All we had to do is believe that it could do what we could not. It does not take a great leap into an organized belief system to accomplish this. It takes only a little bit of faith. We can make a beginning by saying, yes, it's possible I am not the most powerful being in the universe. There must be something or someone greater and I must begin to put my trust in it. Even at the single beginning, simple beginning, many of us found ourselves blocked. We had spent too much time ignoring, criticizing, or misusing faith. <clears throat> It was not easy to give up these old ways. We had become comfortable with them. CDA told us we had to change old ways if we were to live chemical-free lives. Many of us ignored faith. It just didn't fit into our lives. We could put our trust in the ethics of our parents, in the value of the sciences, or simply in the evidence of our senses. 
That was enough. We were startled to realize that by placing trust in these things, we were already operating on a kind of faith. If it worked with that which we could see and feel, wouldn't it work with that which was beyond sight and touch? If we had faith in the familiar or scientific, couldn't we have faith in the spiritual? We could and we do. Our desperation made short work of all our rationalizations. There are many others of us who criticize faith. Not only did, did it not work in our lives, we said, but those who claimed it did work in their lives often accept, acted in ways we found destructive. The truth was that we were critical because our expectations had not been met. Disappointed and disillusioned by our experiences with faith, we lashed out in anger and judged all such experiences harshly. We did not leave room for new ideas about faith until we had no other choice. The misuse of faith was difficult for still others who believed that they had faith that was not working. Indeed, some of us had already asked a greater power to take away our chemical dependency. However, we were taking things out of order. We were asking to have the destruction in our lives removed, but we were not ready to admit our powerlessness over chemicals. We wanted what we wanted rather than what our higher power wanted for us. As we attended more and more meetings, we heard it said time and again, it's time to let go of old ideas. When we were ready to give up the use of chemicals, we also had to be ready to give up the beliefs and behaviors that went with our use. We were ready for a faith that works. When we got past the old ideas, the blocks to faith, we discovered that we were not being asked so much. We expected to be trapped in a narrow hallway, but we found ourselves walking on a broad highway. We were not told to believe in this or that supreme being. It was suggested to us that there was a power greater than ourselves. If we had faith, our higher power could do for us what we could not do for ourselves. To make a beginning, all we needed was an open mind. We simply needed to look around us and see without judgment. When we opened our minds, our when we opened our eyes and our minds in meetings, we saw the most amazing things. We saw chemically dependent people who were no longer using chemicals and who were able to live life day to day. We were not t toughing it out, grimly determined to resist the urge to use. They were free from chemicals, free and happy for perhaps the first time. Oh, surely they had experienced difficulties, yet they believed that they would make it through such times even grow from them, and so they did, without using. We knew how powerful chemicals were in our lives, yet these folks could live and live happily without them. There was a greater power at work in their lives. Indeed, for many of us, it was beginning enough to have faith in the fellowship itself as we could clearly see the miracles being worked within it. At this stage, we found it helpful to make small attempts at a conscious contact with this higher power. We could do this in a number of ways, sharing at meetings, listening to the voice of conscience, speaking out loud to an invisible listener, meditating, praying. We often started saying, please and thank you, each morning asking our higher power for a day without using, and each evening thanking that power for another chemical-free day. With open-mindedness and such small efforts, we began to find our own faith. Thus it was that we came to believe that a power greater than ourselves could restore us to sanity. We accept our insanity and we accept that there is a higher power that can bring sanity into our lives. How do we let that power work in us? If we have come this far with open-mindedness and willingness, we are ready for step three. Um, yeah, CDA, Chemically Dependent Anonymous, that goes with the... Uh, Conscious Contact book I've been reading. Um, pretty good stuff. Good luck.